This is just a quick look at the Canon PowerShot SD770IS 10 megapixel ultra compact digital zoom. Size wise, it's no bigger than a wallet or a deck of cards. Here's a wallet for size reference. It's pretty small. On the top here, we have the power button and the shutter button, and there's a little ring for the zoom rocker zooming in and zooming out. Press and hold the power button. That activates the display in the back here. In playback mode, it does not retract, but in standard record mode, it retracts out like so. This doesn't protrude out too much. It's got the optical image stabilization, which means there's a floating element within the lens itself that counteracts minor camera shake. Here we have the bottom of the camera. You have the tripod socket and the battery compartment which also houses the SD card. Push and slide up. This is just a closer look at the built-in flash. And then you have the LED focus assist lamp and the optical viewfinder lens. And there's the lens itself. When powering the camera on it protrudes out. Like so. Fairly high quality lens for board size. Continuing the tour. The other nice thing about the SD770 is it uses an optical viewfinder as well as the LCD digital. The optical comes in handy when it's bright, bright outside and it's hard to see the screen due to sunlight washing it out. You can use the top optical viewfinder. Also it saves battery by shutting the LCD display off and you're able to get a little more shots out of your battery. Another handy feature to have. Here's some basic tips that will help you set up your camera and get the most out of it. And this applies to any point-and-shoot compact digital camera. I just happen to have the SD770 here as an example. One of the first things that you want to check is to set the flash settings and turn off the red eye reduction. And the reason why I suggest this is the fact that the red eye reduction really doesn't work very well because true red eye reduction is based on the camera flash being off the camera lens axis. A lot of these compact point and shoots have the flash right next to the lens in line with the X of the lens and what that does is it reflects any reflective surface back right at the camera and that's what basically red eye is. So I shut it off. Uh, and what the red eye does in camera is it strobes the flash prior to the actual exposure and that can be distracting to the subject as well as wasting battery. Another important tweak that I like to make is the actual LCD brightness of your screen. This is important because a lot of the cameras come with the setting too bright. Like if I put it all the way to the right, it makes the image brighter. This is good for when you're outside and you don't want to wash out your screen and you want to still be able to see what's on there. Now the bad part about that is the image might be actually brighter than what the camera is capturing on the sensor. So when you go home and you thought that you saw a nicely, bright, you know, nicely brightly lit image on your display, it turns out to be dark and muddy. Well, that's why. So what I would recommend is just dial it down two or three notches from the center and that usually gives me pretty close to what the sensor is going to see. Another option I like to make sure that it's set to is the highest recording capability of the camera. Here we have the different quality levels. I leave mine on super fine so whatever yours says leave it on the highest. Since you paid for the resolution, might as well get the most out of it. You can always downsize the resolution after the picture's been taken in your computer, but you can't upsize. Again, here's the different uh, resolution that the camera captures in. Leave it at the L. Mine shows that at, at 10 megapixels. Now, the reason why you might want to dial it down is if you don't have a lot of room on your memory card and you want to capture the image. So having a lower resolution image is better than no image, that would be the way to go. 
but in my opinion, leave it on the larger setting and bring an extra memory card or two. I mean, you paid for the higher resolution of your camera, you might as well get it. A lot of times the cameras come defaulted at medium, so when they're taking the picture they're wondering why they're not getting the full resolution, that's why. So go into your menu settings and make sure that your image resolution is set to the largest it can record at. Along with an extra card, memory card, and a battery, some type of a portable card reader would be handy. This is the SanDisk SD card reader. It just plugs into your USB port and then once it's in there you can plug in your memory card like so. So you can have access to your images on your computer at any time by carrying this little guy with you. Another useful thing to have is some type of a camera case. In my situation here I have an old soft lint-free sunglass case that I just happened to throw it in. And there you have it.